Let all cats old enough to catch their own prey gather here beneath the high rock for a clan meeting. Mew, I'm Simon. And I'm Evelyn. And I'm Australia. And today we're going to be discussing Tallstar's Revenge, chapters 5, 6, and 7. Probably. Yeah. I think we've, we're probably just going to stick with doing three at once, right? Yeah. Damn. Don't forget that um, if you don't want to be spoiled, you should turn away now, because our spoiler policy is... Spoilers are fun. So for follow-up, I thought we could revisit our exclamation ranking poll from October 2020. Is there new changes? I don't remember... But right now, there's been 12 responses in total, which maybe is more than last time. I think it is. And a comment? What? Hundreds of cats? Thousands of cats? (laughs) Millions and millions and trillions of cats? Yeah, there's a couple comments, too. Wow. 12 responses? Wait a second. Garar won? I think Garar lost. I think it goes lowest means it got, like, the most. Oh, okay. I feel like that was ranked the highest the most. Okay, good. So, yes. Marug got 2.8. Garof, 3.4. And Riaoao, 3.4 also. It's a tie. And then Pa at 4.4. Yao at also at 4.4. Murao, 4.7. And Garar, 4.9. Which I think makes sense that Marug is the winner. Yes, Murug has to be the winner, but Garof doesn't have to be that high. Riawa Wow is clearly the second best. <laughs> yeah. And Garar may being like the last, I think that makes sense. So Yeah, Garar yeah. and Yiao are not my favorites. But I really like Morao and Pa. And then, yeah, we do have two comments, which maybe we actually had them before when we actually talked about it on the podcast, but we didn't see them. Hundreds of cats, thousands of cats, millions and billions and trillions of cats is one comment. I wonder if that's from Robbie. I wonder. (laughs) (laughs) And Murao wins for me purely from the nostalgia. It's the only one I remembered from reading the books as a kid. I really wish I knew who who said that. Yeah, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Murao. Yeah, that's a good one, whoever commented. Yeah. Was it you, Estrella? I don't think so, but I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was like two years ago. <laughs> so it could have been me, but I have no idea. Yeah. I guess I think the poll is still active, so I'll put the link in for this episode. See if we get any more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a fun poll. So for fandom news... um. I saw a post about this on the social media somewhere, but Midnight the Badger's detailed description on on her wiki page. Midnight, character. (laughs) Oh, I guess that's a book, too. Oh, yeah. Nice official art. Oh, yeah. I don't don't like that. (laughs) Very airbrushed. Why is it, like, sort of crooked? Yeah, it's not centered. (laughs) (laughs) See, I just saw a screenshot of the detailed description. Um, So you know how, like, in any wiki article, like, they want there to be references? (laughs) There's quite a lot for Midnight's description. So one of us read it, and one of us make a note whenever there is a, a reference. Okay. Midnight is a huge, reference, bulky, reference, female badger, reference, with small, reference, round, reference, very bright, reference, beady, reference, black eyes, reference. <laughs> she has broad, reference, heavy shoulders, reference, a broad, <laughs> white stripe running down her face, reference, a wide head, reference, and broad, flat, reference, massive, reference. Heavy paws. Reference. Her muzzle is narrow. Reference. And pointed. Reference. And her face has a long striped nose. Reference. She has thick fur. Reference. And broad muscular limbs. Reference. 
<laughs> I love that all of the references to if you have around them say revealed in book page whatever like it's some sort of secret <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like this long awaited um, like cliffhanger or like theory yeah. that's been happening <laughs> is her no. muzzle really broad <laughs> that is fantastic yeah. <laughs> and like so many different pages in different books that they were all revealed in. Hmm. Oh, that's a different book. There's got to be a better way to do those references. <laughs> they all just don't be... need it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll believe it, even if there's no reference. Yeah. Okay. Uh, quote of the week. Who should read that? Estrella, why don't you read that? I have not read this before, so going in fresh. (laughs) Tom looked up. Hi, he meowed. The two-leg meowed back, then mumbled as it crossed the den and started stroking Tom. Tom lifted his tail and purred loudly. Yuck! Lightning tail shuddered beside thunder. The First Battle, Chapter 13. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yuck. I think that might be the most recent book that I've read. <laughs> I oh, that. yeah, when they went into the two-leg den to rescue somebody, I guess. Yep. <laughs> the kids or, maybe. yeah, the kits. Tom stole the kits. Ugh, I hate Tom. He was the worst. Oh, yeah. Horrible. <laughs> but cats like being pet, though. It's not gross for a cat. Only for warriors. Yeah. I guess there's a difference between feral cats and domestica- domesticated, like like people's pets. I don't really know, though. I mean, I feel like you can get close enough to a feral cat. They still like when you pet them. Yeah, it's not like a different <laughs> variety of cat. It's just they've had different life experiences. Maybe they're tricking me. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, sometimes they just they do that just to get food. Or, like, to open the door and then they, like, run away in Warriors. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, are we ready to just get back into the book? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Chapter 5. Summary. Time jump to Tallpaw's apprentice ceremony. Surprise! Heatherstar has been spying on him and noticed he is a more runner at heart. Dawnstripe is his mentor. Sandgorse and the Tunnelers are furious. Tallpaw goes outside for the first time. It's funny because they're outside all of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know why, but I feel like the first chapter that we do is like always the longest. Yeah, I think I have the most. It's definitely longer. Yeah. yeah. It was really long. So we have the cliff notes. I just opened them. Oh, um, I like the last one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don Strike yells no at him. <laughs> I'll start. Chapter 5 Cliff Notes Tall Kit's Apprentice Ceremony. His parents are initially proud for him. Plum Claw is sure that Tall Kit's mentor will be Wooly Tail. Heather Star assigns Don Stripe as Tall Paul's mentor, not Wooly Tail. Tall Paw is relieved and not having to go underground. The Tunnelers, especially Woollytail, Palebird, and Sandgorse, are all outraged. Sandgorse argues that he decides Tallpaw's future. Heathersar angrily retorts that she decides Tallpaw's future. <laughs> the other more runners and apprentices chant his name and congratulate him. Talkit thinks that he wants to be a more runner, but not if it makes his parents angry. Hawkheart warns Tallpaw not to lose his way. Shrewpaw tries to tease Tallpaw, but Tallpaw says he is the former's equal. Tallpaw tries to go talk to his father. His father is furious, saying Tallpaw should be a tunneler. Dawnstripe uh, comforts, I almost said confronts, <laughs> Dawnstripe comforts Tallpaw and takes him out onto the moor. Dawnstripe describes the different kinds of animals that live on the moor, such as lapwings, weasels, and sheep. 
Dawnstripe points out where ThunderClan and RiverClan live. Tallpaw keeps walking forward, closes his eyes, and sniffs her prey. Dawnstripe yells no at him. <laughs> <laughs> I love that they include that. Yeah, I mean, they're, the cliff notes are just so good. <laughs> Bringing real, uh, like, double meaning for the word cliff note. <laughs> Should we be changing our intro to let all cats old enough to hunt gather at Tall Rock or something like that? Because it's Tall Rock now. Oh, wow, you're right. We've been doing it ThunderClan themed. Yeah. ThunderClan bias. <laughs> so let all cats... Yeah, well, we, it's funny. We started this chapter off with uh, let all cats old enough to hunt gather at Tall Rock. Yeah. Just like we start off our own episodes. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone's gathering... Flailfoot, in particular, is excited. This is the ceremony I've been looking forward to, he rasped. Yeah, I think because he is, or he was, a tunneler. So he thinks that the tunnelers are going to get a new recruit. Yeah. So they can dig their pointless hole. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh, what a life of labor. Ugh, yes. I made a note for this. She leaned forward and began lapping the fur on Tall Kit's shoulders. I want you looking your best, she purred. I don't exactly remember why I highlighted that. Maybe just to talk in general about how, like, at every apprentice ceremony, the mother is, like, <laughs> there licking her kits. <laughs> <laughs> like, it happens every, every time. Every time, yeah. You gotta be freshly licked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't look that different, though, whether or not they've been licked. Hmm. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times like they barely get any licks in before it starts. Yeah. They should really prepare like 30 minutes in advance. Yeah. So Heather Star says, it is rare that I give an apprentice name to only one cat. Is that true? I didn't think it was really that rare. I mean, hmm. I don't feel like we see it all the time, but it has to be happening often. Yeah. I guess it happened with Tiger Paw. Which one? Tiger Claw. Oh, yeah. Tiger Paw. Mm -hmm. I remember that. It probably happened to Crooked Paw. Hmm. Can't think of anyone else. I mean, Firestar, but he came in late. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Wasn't he with Graystripe, though? Oh no, that was not that was no. a, that was a warrior name I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. But of course Heather Star is referring to Finch Kit now. Uh, right. Yeah, because we have to keep talking about his dead sibling. Yeah. And um tall Kit. Yeah, tall Kit. Just like one sentence later it's tall paw, but tall kit thinks like perhaps Starkland would grant Finch Kit, an apprentice name. Which is a nice idea, but we know it doesn't happen. Yeah. No. <laughs> they don't even grow up in Starkland. Yeah. No, but they still, like, become wise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, she chooses Dawn Stripe, uh, more runner as his mentor. I approve. I approve. So do I. This is, like, the only good thing that's happened in his entire life. Yeah. It's true. Uh, then he looks at Sangors, and his father's eyes glittered with outrage. So then everybody's, like... I mean, not everybody, but half of them are, like, very mad. And instead of, like, the usual celebration, there's just all this outrage and argument. But also, aren't there only, like, five tunnelers at this point. Like, there's not very many of them to be upset. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's probably just, like, 20 cats and, like, four cats <laughs> complaining. Yeah, they're definitely a minority. <laughs> Heather Star has good reasons to to have him be a more runner, though. Yeah. She says, I've seen him when the wind's up. The wind's up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
It gets into his fur so he can't sit still. He needs to be above ground. He needs to be true to his nature. <laughs> Pretty hard to argue against that. True to his nature, Wooly Tail Spat. What kit doesn't run and jump? Sounds like Wooly Tail has suppressed something. Yeah, maybe he was actually meant to be a more runner. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, I think actually every single cat was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're all meant to be more runners. Because it feels better. Sandgorse does say um, tall paws kin are tunnelers stretching back for moons. Which is a really strong lineage to be unbroken. Yeah. Yeah, and like, does that is that the standard? Where it's like certain sort of families and bloodlines were continuing to do the same job? And then what happened? Have just enough of the tunnelers died and not <laughs> had children first? Or has this been a thing of like just making the the tunneler kits be more runners instead? Or have they just died out? <laughs> died out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'd like to believe. Uh-huh. And then after... Heather Star says, if Toppo wants to train as a tunneler later, he can, but I want him to train as a more runner first. That, if they're gonna be doing this, they should be doing that with everybody. Yeah, like, why not? They should all be doing both jobs. Yeah. <laughs> you would not have as much division in your clan if everybody knew how hard everybody else's job was. Yeah, that's, like, the that's, like, a big problem. Like, they don't actually know what it's like to be the other person. The other cat, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we get the part where Sandgorse is says, like, I'll decide his future, and then Heather Star says, I decide the future of my warriors. Which, like, what about Tallpaw? No one even asked him. Yeah. Also, a good thing Heather Star is not a bad leader, because she literally, her word is law. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can't get over that rule. No. So they still didn't cheer? Oh, he, they're about to cheer. Yeah, but they don't at first. Yeah, there's like this huge, <laughs> long, that? awkward silence. Uh, not a proper welcome. No, no. it's not even Paul's fault. No, he didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't look like everybody's even calling his name. Like I don't I don't think that's really happening. No. Mm. Mm-hmm. No, I guess we'll talk about it later, but his parents like are so rude to him. Yeah. Not to mention Shrewpa. <laughs> uh, yeah. He's like, you should be underground, worm kit. Heather Star must be crazy. If Shupa hates Tunneler so much, why does he want Worm Kit to be underground? I guess he likes having somebody beneath him. Oh, literally beneath him. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but again, like, the, the whole clan is here. Like, they haven't left yet. I made sure to check, like, to see, like, and no, it sounds like everybody's still there. He bullies Tallpaw in yeah. front of the entire clan, and none of them do anything. Yeah, that's outrageous. Unacceptable. I also like that Tapa defends himself and says, I'm not a kit or a worm. (laughs) We know. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, at least he stood up for himself. He doesn't do that very much. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And yeah, his dad is just like... I mean, he's not. He's been ruder to his son before, but he's not supportive at all. At least he doesn't like. He asks Tallpaw, "What do you want to do?" You know, and Tallpaw does say that he wants to be a more runner. And then Sandgorge is like, "Then don't. Uh, then don't ask her to change it." Yeah, but he still makes him feel plenty bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, by saying I had such plans. Yeah. <laughs> he says, You were born to be a tunneler. Sangors flashed an angry gra- an angry glance at Heather Star as she sat, head bowed, 
beside Reed Feather in the Hollow. You can't change that, no matter what any other cat tells you. It's true that he can't change what he wants to be, but I don't think it's um, a tunneler. No. But I thought that was a very strong LGBT illusion there. Yeah, and the thing I want to say is just like, it. there's a lot of that throughout this book. But it seems to be like sort of reversed, where like his parents want him to be a tunneler. So yeah. straight that was the expectation. But then every other cat in Wing Clan hates that. And so then is <laughs> Wing Clan just all gay? Yeah, a world <laughs> worse being straight is a minority. Yeah, that's, like, that's the main thing I wrote down. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. It is like reversed. Yeah. Anyway, that's my new headcanon. Wind Clan are all just gay. <laughs> yeah. Nobody can tell me otherwise. <laughs> and then yeah, like whenever whenever there's kits, it's just because like you know they need to have keep the clan going, so they have a job to yep. do. Okay, so then he's going outside with his new mentor. For the first time in his life, Tallpaw was going to see what lay beyond the heather walls. So I guess he never even snuck out. Like, never. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we don't really hear much from him. We kind of skip for most of him being a kid. And when he was a kid, he was just getting bullied by everybody else. (laughs) Yeah. Imagine how boring to be a kid. There's nothing to do all day. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you have, like, all this training and all these tasks. I mean, he was digging holes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, true. For no reason. Yep. Like, I feel like if I was, like, four months, I'd probably want to do something. Like, maybe I leave the camp, like, you know, a few times for whatever, like, with some other warriors. Like, with my parents. Yeah, I mean, I do think that sometimes the the queens do take the kids, like, on the little walks outside. But also, what's her name? Palebird? Uh, um, yeah. She yeah, also, though, like, good. doesn't do any... She's not gonna take him on a walk. No. <laughs> okay, so I guess they went somewhere up high, and they're looking down at stuff. Um, and there's more lapwings. Lapwings make an appearance again, as well as a reference to a weasel. It's a pretty rare creature for warriors, I think. Yeah. Yeah, from this we learn that they have weasels and buzzards. Oh which yeah. Is not I think that we knew before. We knew that they had sheep already. Yeah. Yeah, they've hmm. got all kinds of different stuff going on over there. Damn. How come the book like it's always foxes and badgers and dogs? Like let's have some a weasel or two to like, you know, switch it up. <laughs> I think <that. laughs> Yeah. Mm. But I like that they also, it's mentioned that they taste bad too. Um, yeah. Because that was the thing with the buzzards, which is like, why aren't they killing them and like eating them and stuff? This like addressed the entirety of the weasel situation immediately. It was like, here are weasels. Here's what we do. <laughs> yeah. We do kill them. We don't eat them. Moving on. Yeah. There ought to be weasels in Thunder Clan. Yeah, there ought to be. I don't recall ever a weasel. I don't even know what a lapwing is. I feel like we looked up before and it's just like some sort of bird. Probably. Let me look it up. Oh, it's a weird bird. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, some weird stuff going on. Hmm. Yeah, very like long, thin legs. Oh, they're plovers. Uh, a group of lapwings is called a deceit. I love group bird names. They're so good. I don't know. Who's coming up with those, though? Because, like... People who hate birds. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> That's not a positive thing. They rarely are. Murders of crows and kindnesses of ravens. Yeah. Deceit of lapwings. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anything else to say about this next section before the next note? Um, 
I mean, there's another instance of uh, Tapa getting sort of bullied in front of everyone and no one doing anything about it. Looking uh, for rabbit yeah. hole burrowing, stop blocking the entrance, rabbit brain. And then, like, there's a shit ton of cats there and none of them say anything. Yeah. Like, the and next thing that is a congratulations to Dawn Stripe on getting an apprentice. Like, they're just completely ignored. We should keep a tally of all the times that Talkit gets bullied. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Then sheep happen. Yeah, and they should use the sheep's wool more than they do. I know that they do use it, but later on there's talk of being cold. And I'm like, they mm. shouldn't be cold ever at all. They have access to sheep. Yeah, just use they just jump on top of the sheep and sleep there. They really could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but they're not scared of the sheep. They're not intimidated by them at all. No. Uh, would you be able to like jump on the back of a sheep and get some of the wool off? I don't. Probably. I think so. Yeah. If you have claws, yeah. Yeah. I think if the warrior cats can, like, garden, they should be able to harvest wool from sheep. Yeah. Farm all kinds of... Animals and produce. (laughs) Produce. (laughs) (laughs) They could just, like, weave the sheep's wool into some sticks and have, like, the sickest den (laughs) of any plant. It would be so warm. Mm Mm-hmm. They could like make blankets. Honestly, they should be able to like knit and crochet at this point because like <laughs> they're they've proven to be really dexterous with their paws. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Rypaw does say of sheep, they just live to chew and make dirt. <laughs> <laughs> True, I guess. I mean, that's all they really do. Yeah, but I like that it's chew, not eat. <laughs> yeah. They chew a lot, even if they don't didn't just take a bite full. Just yeah. <laughs> I'm a little confused about why there's sheep so close. Like they didn't mention a fence anywhere, did they? I don't Are think so. Sheep? I think the sheep are just on the cliff. That's true. Like, whose sheep are they? <laughs> yeah, why are they just out there? It's like big territory. Yeah, I don't feel like they ever talk of like a farmer being around. Maybe I'm wrong. No. But I don't remember. Yeah, there's there sheep out there. There's got to be some two-leg activity tractor. out there. Farmers. Oh, yeah. Border collie. Yeah, something. It's just like, oh, yeah. it's just sheep. It was her wild. Like right next to the suburbs of England. It's just still wild. Yeah. Sheep <laughs> <on>. Where's <laughs> <their> <laughs> So then there's the tall paw no incident, and the chapter ends. But we don't even get to know why. Yeah. yeah. Know what? It's a cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a picture of Missy as a kitten. Okay, that was my top question. <laughs> Whose cat is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after I like put the PDF into here, I guess some of the pictures didn't work, or maybe... like. I don't know what happened, but there's just like a warning sign, like a triangle, an exclamation point. So I decided yeah, to put so- in other pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it then for chapter five. Yeah, yep. we really stopped on a cliffhanger, as you said. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's move on to chapter six. Summary. Tallpaw almost fell into the gorge. They look at the whole territory. Then they go home. <laughs> and then the wiki's how much longer? Yeah, <laughs> Why is it, is. it so long? <laughs> okay, um, wiki summary for chapter 6. Tallpon nearly falls into the gorge and is terrified. The group hears a dog. Rypaw comments that it's in Riverclan territory and therefore not their problem. <laughs> Lark Slash takes Rypaw to check the border. Dawnstripe points out RiverClan's marshy land and forests of ThunderClan, Fortrees, the Great Rock, ShadowClan's territory, and the Thunderpath to Tallpaw. 
Talpa is excited about being able to go to gatherings. Dawnstripe shows him the high moor and the high stones. The mentor and apprentice hear a tunneling patrol below. Dawnstripe explains that Talpa will get basic tunneling training. Talpa's old worries spark all over again. The two head back to Wind Clan's camp. Dawnstripe talks about the glory of being a Wind Clan cat. Talpa worries about when Sangor said he was a tunneler he has a tunneler's tail and the look of disappointment in his father's eyes. Barkpa comes to greet Talpa. Talpa asks his friend if he wants to share a mouse. Talpa comments about his sore paws, but his friend tells him it's perfectly normal. Shrewpa teases Talpa again, calling him Wormpa. The former insists the latter was supposed to be a tunneler. It'd be a lot easier if they just said Shrewpa insists Talpa is supposed to be a tunneler. What is all this former and latter stuff for? <laughs> yeah, it's too detailed. <laughs> Yeah, they switch it up every now and again. <laughs> yeah. For reason. So all that that like big dramatic cliffhanger, and then after like a couple paragraphs, that's it. They just move on, and it's never remembered again. <laughs> I wonder when is the last time they have lost a paw to the gorge? <laughs> is this a regular occurrence? Yeah, she. It's said like it's just kind of casual. Yeah. Like, it's a sort of joke. I'm just like, ah, <laughs> not this one. <laughs> mm-hmm. I remember them when that one cat, when Ray Stripe chased him off the edge. Oh, yeah. Lark Splash <laughs> does say about the dog that they see, who'd want to hang out with a dog? Nasty, slavering things. Yeah. I mean, I gotta agree a little bit. Yeah, especially the dogs that they see yeah, out here. Like- the dogs and warriors are always the worst kind. <laughs> Nobody yeah. ever has just like a chill old dog who just wants to vibe. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, this though made me think of just like how do they know what all of the animals are called? But they still don't. They still don't know what like people are called or that monsters aren't actually alive. But they know, like, what a lapwing is, and they know that it's different from a robin. And they right. know what it's... both of them are called. Like, they speak English, just not when it comes to two legs and their stuff. And then even, like, kitty pets will know a lot more th- words for things. Um... Mm-hmm. They still won't know that cars aren't alive, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like I don't think there's an answer. I think it's just a plot hole. Yeah, I don't mind it though. Provides for a lot of commentary. <laughs> yeah, it's really just the specific birds that really take it to a different place. <laughs> yeah, they're not all just like birds. <laughs> so they see River Clan territory and Thunder Clan, and Hallpaw thinks that living under the trees is like basically being a tunneler because they have more in common with tunnelers than more runners which is kind of cool like i love forests and like brambles and stuff that's like tunnels and like arches over your head and remembering like the thunder clan cats going to wind clan they were like really scared of how open it was as well you get to see that like it is quite a dense forest that they live in yeah Mm -hmm. i think i'm gonna disagree about it being more similar to tunnelers though (laughs) (laughs) it's just an exaggeration i guess i would definitely rather i think live in wind clan because like i don't know like in the when the forest is so dense like that like there's all sorts of like gross bugs and animals and like they just be hidden until you're there It's probably a lot wetter in the forest, yeah. Yeah, true. So they were, like, on top of a big hill, I guess, and they were looking at ThunderClan. No, it says they were, so they were at the gorge, I guess, or still around the gorge area. Then they're, like, crossing a slope, going around, like, on the territory, maybe on the border, kind of. Um, 
Because they were able to see River Clan and the- Yeah. But then they go to a place and they can look down. Um, or no, they can't. They can't even see four trees. No, this doesn't make sense. Because if you can see River Clan and Thunder Clan, then and you're on Wind Clan, then you have to be able to see four trees. I would think so. Because like here, looking at the map, I mean, four trees is like right there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It looks like the part of the territory that they must be at, like. If you're far away from the ThunderClan border, you should be able to definitely see four trees there. And if you're close, then four trees is like right next to you. They also mentioned seeing pine trees in Shadow Clan, I think, but there's no pine trees in the Shadow Clan map. That's true. All there is in Shadow Clan is a little bit of trees right along the Thunder Path, some rocks, a dead tree, and carrion place. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> They definitely have pine trees there, though. Yeah, they do. Like, that's something I remember hearing many times about their territory. Yeah. It really bothers me how the map is so inconsistent with the story. Yeah, I mean, if it's not going to be accurate, why include it? <laughs> yeah. Or just, like, pay, like, hire somebody to just, like, make a better map. I think it's interesting that, um, Talpa asks where the Great Rock is, and Dawnstripe says it's hidden at the moment, but you'll see it soon enough. Which makes it sound like it's gonna like emerge from somewhere, and not <laughs> just like they're at the wrong angle to see. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like yeah. somewhere else right now, but it'll be back later. Don't you worry. <laughs> it's on a bathroom break. <laughs> yeah, like, what? It sounds like it's not there. Yeah, like you can just push a button and it'll come up. And then, yeah, I guess they see the Thunder Path, too. They didn't actually go into Four Trees, but sometimes they do that on these tours. And then a monster does tear past roaring louder than the wind. I should hope it's louder than the wind. It's not unless there's a tornado. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I bet from the more it would get quite loud sometimes with the wind. Look at Wendy out yeah. there. It's yeah. Flat grass. Sure. I wonder if they ever will have a tornado. That would be cool. Yeah. I mean, they were saving it for the final arc. Yeah. They're kind of running out of ideas. I mean, for like disasters. They've already had like floods and fires. Have they had like an earthquake? I don't think so. Have earthquakes in England? Yeah. No. I mean, earthquakes, tornadoes, and volcanoes. I don't think do they ever happen in England. Probably like basically no. I'm looking up if they have earthquakes. They do have earthquakes. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they're like much rarer than somewhere else. Probably a lot more likely than a volcano. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if any off the top of my head that they have right next to them that are active. <laughs> Oh, and then I guess here right after this, um, there's the tunnelers underneath them. <laughs> Mud hole. There was alarm in the mew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What just... an awful job. That's not even uncommon. Right. <laughs> uh. Also, like, the way it's just sort of shouted out of context confused me for a second. I was like, what's happening even? Who's saying yeah. that? Are they calling somebody that? Has something happened? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is that? Yeah, it could it be an insult in mud hole? <laughs> yeah. Also, I think they're still right next to the Thunder Path. Could also just like be somebody's name. <laughs> it could, yeah. <laughs> mud kit, mud paw, I mean, mud it hole. Terrible, but yeah, hole is a terrible last name. <laughs> <laughs> but it could be one. Yeah, we've had worse. Mud hole, though. <laughs> and it's funny, they can just hear them really loudly from underground. You know, if they yeah. are at the Thunder Path, that's like the opposite direction from the gorge. 
Which yes. I thought that's what they were working on, digging to the gorge. Maybe they're still trying to keep up with their other regular duties, and that's just their special project. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm just imagining now, like, imagine you're from a different clan and you're going to High Stones. And you just hear, look out, mud hole. <laughs> I can't believe no one knows about the tunnelers. I mean, they would have to. There's just no way they've kept it a secret for <laughs> yeah. many generations. Yeah. The more of this book that we read, the more unlikely it seems. So yeah, they don't go into help because it's not their job. And then I guess they like go back to home. Yeah, they just don't care that they might be in danger. Yeah. Don Stripe doesn't want to get in the way. Or maybe she just doesn't want to go there. She doesn't do that. So I guess as they're going to head back, Tallpaw says, I didn't imagine Wind Clan territory was so huge. Then Don Stripe tells him, We guard the edge of the world. <laughs> True. That's the edge of the world. Very dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with this having come out after they've gone to the mountains and moved across the mountains. All of yeah. That. Like, and they fun. went to the ocean, which is definitely more yeah. the edge of the world. But I guess they don't know that. But, like, it's not the edge of the world because you can see the world in every direction going <laughs> further. Yeah. <laughs> the edge of their world. Yeah. Their border. Where they choose to stop walking. <laughs> Anything else to say here? They go back to the camp. Somebody caught a grouse, another rare creature. Another specific bird. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Nothing else to say for that. Yeah. No, but I love this next image. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so big. <laughs> it's really big. That would be a great premise for warriors. I mean, not really great. It would be a premise for warriors if they were just that big. Oh my god. It would certainly <laughs> shake things up. Yeah. Like, what would they even eat? Whole trees. Wasn't that yeah. another big picture? Where, like... The mountains were kibbles and like swamp of like and like sausages and chicken drumsticks and like. Oh, I don't know. I don't remember that. Uh, I feel like I've seen something like that. Mm -hmm. Summary. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. All right. Chapter seven. The next morning happens. Tallpaw learns how to run. Then they look out at Outlook Rock. He is about to participate in some trading with the other apprentices. Some trading. <laughs> I I had a lot of typos this time. <laughs> training. That's what I meant. <laughs> I think they're gonna trade. <laughs> oh, I'd like to hear about some trading. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what they trade. I guess like the medicine cats will trade herbs sometimes. Uh, yeah, they do trade I herbs. It. Wiki Cliff Notes, Chapter 7. Dawnstrike wakes her apprentice up. Tallpaw wonders where his father is. Shrewpaw teases Tallpaw by calling him Wormpaw. Original? Tallpaw yep, never <laughs> done that before. Tallpaw responds by calling him Bug Breath. Dawnstrike angrily says, but only Kit's name call. Tallpaw retorts by saying Shrewpaw started it. Shrewpaw teases Tawpaw again, calling him Tattlepaw. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good one. Yeah. Dawnstripe explains the younger apprentices will help with the older apprentices' final assessment. Oh, I didn't know it was their final assessment. Tallpaw greets Hickory Nose and Sandgorse, but they coldly ignore him. Tallpaw wonders if all the others will treat him like from now on. Tallpaw and Shrewpaw do warm-up laps. Tallpaw goes too fast the first time. He tries again and does much better. Shrewpaw teases him, calling him a tunneler, but Tallpaw doesn't reply. 
The apprentices and mentors head over to Outlook Rock. Tall Paw and True Paw watch Rye Paw, Doe Paw, and Stag Paw do the observation portion of their final assessment. The older apprentices move into the hunting portion. Tall Paw is the rabbit. Tall Paw asks what will happen if the older paws catch him. Cloud Runner explains to make it as hard as possible for them to catch him. Tall Paw is very worried, wondering how he can outrun three trained apprentices. Hey, they're literally playing rabbit for their assessment. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> this is nothing more than a kid's game. <laughs> I got like all the longest ones with the million bullet points. I know, yeah. <laughs> I swear almost every one that I did for like the last like three have all started with Dawn Stripe. Oh. <laughs> Wake up, sleepy slug. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Tall Paw is greeted. Do we hear of slugs very often? Oh no. Yeah, not That's a ton. another rare creature sighting. I mean, yeah. it's not quite a sighting, but we don't hear enough to them much. Yeah. <laughs> there's not enough about insects in general, I think. They're never scared yeah, of either. Like yeah. What if one time they're collecting cobwebs and there's a, still a spider in it? Yeah. It's gotta happen sometimes, or like dead bug carcasses in it. <laughs> There's gotta be stuff stuck in it. Yeah, for a series that's set entirely in nature, there's not a lot of nature going on. Yeah, yeah we hear about it at least. Talpa, so Talpa has, has not been getting enough exercise to to be used to all of this hard work. Yeah. This is just the next day, right? Yeah. I think so. I mean, I feel like he should be, though. I mean, presumably, his father made him keep digging all the time. He should be, like, the buffest apprentice that there is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess, I guess like we the, skipped all of that. Like, the only snippet we get into him being a kid is, like, him, like, using his paws very intensely. That's got to strengthen like, your fore paws and your hind paws. Yeah. Yeah, and then his like pads shouldn't be sore from walking around either. Like he should be just totally ready to do whatever. Maybe Sandgors gave it up. <laughs> Maybe. I don't feel like he's much of a quitter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't he like two weeks old or something when that started? Yeah, he, like, just kid. opened his eyes. <sighs> and you're yeah. telling me that he complained one time, and Sankors is like, okay, you're right, I'll wait. Yeah, probably. Oh, yeah, just like we were talking about the nests and insulation. The apprentice's den is a lot colder than the nursery, and he says my leaf bear would be freezing. Yeah, get that yeah. sheep's wool. Yeah. yeah. He makes a plan to get some heather and snagged wool so that his nest is nice and protected and no wind could reach through it. Which, you know, that sounds an awful lot like a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The wool could also be helpful for, like, medicine cat stuff. They wouldn't have to use cobwebs. Instead, they could use wool. It's much more absorbent. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Harvest the wool more, you guys. Go attack a sheep. Yeah. Yeah, kill a sheep. Get it. They can eat it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if they don't do anything, enough of them together, they can kill it. Yeah, especially if there's a lamb. <laughs> Imagine like a, a sheep getting like coated in cats attacking it. <laughs> I mean, they kill a, a freaking mountain lion later on. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> True. I wonder yeah, if they eat delicious. the mountain lion. Yeah, do they eat yeah, sharp they... trees? Hmm. Well, don't they drop a rock on it? Isn't that how it dies? Yeah, yeah. like a stalactite. Is it just like in the middle of a cave? I think so. <laughs> how do they get it out of there? Dead carcass alert! Mountain lion? That would be so heavy. 
I don't and think they it's... ate it. <laughs> Cleaned up after themselves. Yeah. Oh, it's horrific. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they do share prey, I guess. Just everybody gather around the eaten carcass and just gnaws away <laughs> at the mountain lion. Yeah. I guess with prey, it's usually like like it's small enough that you can eat it and not very many bites. Like this is so so much bigger. Like I don't know how how did that work? The tribe to have eaten the mountain lion. I don't know. You know, wouldn't it have started I'm gonna be thinking about this for a while now. What what happened with the mountain lion? Yeah. I guess I don't remember what season it was. Maybe it was cold enough that he didn't decompose very fast. Oh, that's horrible. All right. Okay. Stop dawdling, guys. Stop dawdling, Tall Pod says. Oh, hey. Rypod was hauling a wad of sheep's wool towards the elder's den, so they do use some of it. Yeah, but just not enough. So I guess at first here we get the name calling incident. Which yeah, was just... definitely started by Shrewpaw. And is handled so poorly by Don Stripe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is terrible. Shrewpaw calls him Wormpaw. Then Tallpaw says Bug Breath. And then Don Stripe is scolding Tallpaw and ignoring the problem of Shrewpaw. And then Shrewpaw continues calling him Tattle- Tattlepaw. And Don Stripe ignores it and changes the subject. Yep. Why Just is no one on. scolding Shrewpaw? Maybe Shrewpaw has, like, blackmail on all these cats. <laughs> I like the insult of Tattlepaw, though, because Tattletail, <laughs> yeah. Tattletail, yeah. Tattletail. <laughs> so good. Oh, and then he sees his dad. And Sangors ignores him. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to your son, my god. Yeah, also just like, he didn't choose this. Any of the adults who are mad at him need to get it together. But they never, they don't pick who mentors them. That has never been a thing. Mm Mm-hmm. He had no say in the matter. Yeah, these cats are all so bad. Anything to say about the rest of this whole page? I didn't. I mean, the only thing is uh, Tapa uh, thinks where the Tunneler's going to treat him like he was from a different clan now, which is just reiterating that these should just be two they're just living as two separate clans. Yeah, they are. Yeah. In the same camp for some reason. They're not united at all. <laughs> And then it seems like the apprentices are in a kind of exercise regimen. So, like, <laughs> Hair Flight gives Shrewpaw three laps. Like, they're yeah. running laps? What? <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> and then, yeah, Tallpaw really overexerts himself and, like, runs as fast as he possibly can trying to beat Shrewpaw, who also started, like, some significant amount of time before he did. I've just spotted another uh, rare creature sighting for this, yeah. which is that it says Outlook Rock stuck out from the Mortap like a snipe's beak. They don't catch snipes. What is a snipe? What? It's a bird. Wow. It's a bird with a beak that sticks out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I actually looked it up when I read this earlier. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they didn't actually see a snipe, but they know about them. Interesting. So then he runs more laps, I guess, and he's better at it now because he got a little bit of training. His technique was all wrong. And he was just supposed to know what technique he was supposed to have for running in a circle. (laughs) Yeah, I guess to be fair, he kind of like set off maybe before Dawnstrike was ready. Right. And yeah, I guess his long legs and his long tail are really, I think he's really good at running. Did we get to the part about his long tail being used to pull him out of, like, a landslide? 
Okay, then. I don't think so. But um, I do remember that. <laughs> yeah. This is the only clan that tests apprentices on their observation skills. Yeah, which I appreciate. Yeah, I love seeing these different practices. Like, I was just reading somebody's in ThunderClan, and it was literally like, catch a piece of prey. And then there wasn't any prey because it was winter, so she didn't pass. And then like the next time she tried, she did catch a piece of prey, and then she passed, and that was it. Like, they do that all the time. <laughs> so what other observation skills, or what other things should be in the assessment? Because, like, there's never any fighting no. battle moves in the assessment, which is, like, half of what they do. Probably, like, um, yeah, battle moves, um, how to do your taxes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tree climbing and like navigating terrain. Yeah, directional skills. Yeah, survival skills. Medicine cat skills. Etiquette. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would go a long way. Yeah. Yeah, emotional yeah, I also, intelligence. <laughs> I also think that they should learn basic medicine cat skills, all of them. Be yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're so easy. Even a human can learn them just by reading Warriors. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I would be a better medicine cat than, like, most Warriors at this point. <laughs> it's interesting that all the apprentices see different things when they're observing. Like, I guess the mm -hmm. apprentices only say a few things, and then the next apprentice says another few things. Yeah, I wouldn't want to go after anybody else. Yeah, because if you yeah. go first, you get all the easiest things. Yeah, they should, like, move. They should, like, yeah, go to a different spot. Or maybe they face a different direction or something. Yeah. 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 One of the things Rypot observes is there's a heron fishing in the stream beside Long Wall. What? Yeah, what's that? <laughs> what do you mean, it's Long Wall? wall. <laughs> I don't think I noticed that before. It's capitalized. <laughs> Is that a fence? <laughs> it's not even the long wall. It's just long wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're almost at the end. Yeah, they're about to play rabbit. <laughs> yeah. At the last sunrise, he had been a kit living with his mother in the nursery. This was his first ever taste of warrior training. And he was already being lined up as prey for bigger, stronger, faster cats. Yeah, he's so scared about it. It's like he thinks they're actually going to eat him. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, on one hand, that's ridiculous. On the other hand, has anybody ever been nice to him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the next sense that they would just kill him. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get caught. <laughs> it's over. It's over. Yeah. Anything else to say about the content of these chapters? Did you like them? I liked them. I liked them okay. Yeah, they were alright. Okay, favorite and least favorite parts of the episode. Hmm. My favorite part was when, when he was planning on adding some wool and heather to his nest to make it more warm and comfortable. I really like that because he doesn't have enough warm and comfortable things. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I'll go with they just live to chew and make dirt for my favorite part. <laughs> About sheep. Nothing really stands out that much for me, actually. No. I don't think I'll say my favorite part is the variety of creatures. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that the shrew paw stuff is my least favorite part again. Yeah, either that or the sand gore stuff. Yeah, or honestly, just like the entire clan and how they seem to be okay and participate in bullying a child. They're yeah, not I think my favorite part might be nobody cheering for him right away. Oh, yeah. no, poor thing. <laughs> yeah. It's a, very, it's a very sad thing to imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Well, before you turn this podcast off, um, stick around for the next three to four minutes to hear 
an article in the newspaper called Notice About Food for Thought from a Milk Drinker. Oh, wait, no. What? Oh, no, you oh. said notice about. <laughs> I was supposed to say that part. Joe Biden. What is that? It is Joe Biden. It's a Joe Biden thing to say. <laughs> yeah, if you want to hear, um, we actually made a reference to this article last episode. But no, um, food for thought for a milk drinker. Great. Yeah, we get the the local agricultural newspaper, and it always has really good stuff like this. Goodbye. How are we doing this outro now? <laughs> Maybe let's all say it all at once. So I'll do three, no, we two, tried one. That go. Last time it was <laughs> we'll give it another try. Okay, three, two, one. Go. Goodbye. Good. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> 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 okay. I couldn't even put my mouth in the right position to say goodbye. And you were already saying goodbye. Let's try it again. Three, two, one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> All right, how about we just go in the same order? I'll say goodbye with a question mark. Goodbye. 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 Editor. I enjoyed the March 19th letter titled Drink Milk with Meals and was thinking about the author's question, why don't the dairy families in South Central Pennsylvania drink milk regularly? I am a 74-year-old grandfather of 36 grandchildren and 45 great-grandchildren and believe you me, they drink their share of milk. We did not grow up on a dairy farm, but we love milk. I am one of ten children and I can remember the days when the milkman made deliveries to our house in Burnville. If my mind serves me correctly, we got about 50 quarts of milk a week. Milk is still my favorite drink, good cold whole or chocolate. I still often drink some before I go to bed. I think it makes me sleep better. My family found it very disappointing when we recently attended a large agricultural event in Harrisburg where thousands of people were in attendance, many of whom were dairy farmers. To my amazement, when I looked for my favorite drink, there was none to be found. I checked out most, if not all, of the food stands, and to my disappointment, there was no milk to be bought. I had to wonder what is wrong with this picture, this large Pennsylvania farming complex and you can't even buy a chocolate milk. I have attended many farm sales, auctions, and would you believe that at many of these sales, with lunch and snack stands, there is no milk or chocolate milk to go along with all those pies, cakes, and whoopie pies? What a disappointment for a milk drinker. Another thing I would like to mention is that all the big box stores and chain stores, like Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, CVS, etc. have those nifty little coolers right up front, next to the cash register filled with soda, water, and all kinds of drink. But to my dismay, never, or very seldom, can you find my favorite drink, milk. I again have to ask, how many other people like myself would grab a good cold chocolate milk if it was readily available and more handy to grab like all those other drinks? I have to believe the soda companies know how to sell their product. You ask why people don't drink milk more regularly. I say maybe they would if it was more readily available and handy to grab. I want to repeat, I am not a dairy farmer, but we as a family enjoy good cold milk. In fact, we enjoy milk to the point that several of our grandchildren served milk at their weddings. One of them had it in small bottles with their names printed on the lids to be served to several hundred guests. It was a real hit to have good, cold milk to go with the wedding cake. It's the healthy, Hearty drink, good cold milk, cake and milk, cookies and milk, pie and milk, graham crackers and milk, strawberry shortcake and milk, and just a glass of fresh cold milk before you go to bed. Why not try it? 
Just some food for thought from a milk drinker. Geraldine Schnecker, Burnville, Pennsylvania.